Hi everyone, this is Dr. Moes Kakiani, a prosthodontist from Mumbai. My first on the platform of uh, Medisage, supremely excited and look forward to discussing with you on a topic that is very, very close to my heart. So very quickly, friends, I'm going to share screen. I'm talking to you today about occlusion in full mouth dentistry. It is a complex topic. I have a very short time frame to discuss with you. So I'm going to try to press everything such that I make it as impactful as possible. Let me start off by asking a very simple question. What is occlusion? Now, if you think about it, occlusion by definition is the act of maxillary and mandibular teeth meeting each other. Now, what could be the big fuss about it, right? Having said that, there is so much that we can talk about occlusion because it's one aspect, friends, that is at the intersection of literally every branch of clinical dentistry. Regardless of whether you are a general dentist or your specialist, occlusion is something that will play a role in your clinical work. Having said that, let me first highlight a topic or, or a fact that's very, very stunning to a lot of clinicians when, when they hear the truth about how long do teeth physically contact each other during one given day? And the answer is on an average, 10 minutes. That's it. 10 minutes throughout the day. That's all there is to physical maxillary and mandibular tooth contact. Remember the rest of the times the mandible is at a rest position, which means teeth are not physically in contact with each other. During chewing, the start and end of the masticatory stroke, that's the only time for a microsecond that teeth contact each other. The only other time when teeth physically contact each other is when we swallow, which means through a 24 hour day, teeth barely contact for 10 minutes. And despite all of this, despite this friends, clinicians often fear occlusion. So let me help you understand through a very, uh, very quick video as to why do we often fear occlusion so Sir, much. May I present to you the super luxury yacht, the Nefertiti. Apart from all the luxuries, it has six luxury suites, three kitchens, a mini golf course, a 3D theater, two ballrooms, and to top it all, it has a top speed of 25 knots. <laughs> <laughs> the same concept goes through in dentistry. Chahe kitna bhi achha crown do, kitna bhi achha restoration do, full mouth karo, patient ka ek hi sawal rehta hai. Doctor saab, kitna saal chalega? Kitna warranty milega? Because remember, when it comes to prosthetic dentistry, everything is measured in terms of longevity and that is your definition of success. Now, when you want your restorations to survive the test of time, in your patient's mouth, we need to achieve what is called as perfected occlusion. This is almost a idealistic scenario that I'm going to present to you. I understand ideal is never available in nature. My priority here is to give you a benchmark so that you can compare every tooth that you restore in your patient's mouth from a single restoration to a bridge, to a quadrant, to an arch, to a full mouth reconstruction. I am purely here talking about tooth supported restorations. Perfected occlusion has two different phenomenal uh, positions to it. One is in static occlusion, that's MIP. And the other is in excursion, which is the dynamic movements of the mandible. So I'm going to give you ideal or perfected form of occlusion, which is defined as mutually protected occlusion. What you see on screen here, friends, is the ideal tooth contact position for maxillary teeth. Along with posteriors, you also want anterior teeth to contact. And this contact should be uniform in intensity and they should be contacting simultaneously. You do not want any interferences, which means you do not want any high crown or high filling or a high restoration in your patient's mouth. Now, ideally, a maxillary premolar needs two points of contact, a functional cusp tip contact and a marginal ridge contact. Usually in the maxillary for a class one scenario, you get a mesial marginal ridge contact. That is why in the premolar, you see a palatal cusp contact and mesial marginal ridge contact. Now, if you look at your molar, a maxillary molar 
ideally has four points of contact two functional cusp tips one mesial marginal ridge and one central fossa this is ideal if you can achieve all of these contacts best case scenario that should be your mission let me try to chase these contacts as much as i can whenever i am working on the occlusal surface of maxillary teeth simple thought here is take your articulating paper place it into the patient's mouth ask the patient to do rapid tapping which means tap 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 quickly you will see a lot of blue marks you will remove all of the blue marks excepting for the ones that you see on screen those are your static occlusal contacts for maxillary teeth now it's very important friends that you use articulating papers of two colors I personally prefer blue for static and red for dynamic. So now I will put a horseshoe shape, red color articulating paper into the patient's mouth, ask the patient to bite down and then protrude forward, which means go into a protrusive relation until the incisal edges come in physical contact. In protrusion, this is what I ideally want to see. I want all four upper incisors to show lines. What are these lines? These lines are guidances. These are the surfaces that are bringing about the forward movement of the mandible with posterior disocclusion. Remember reading Christensen's phenomenon? As you bring the mandible forward, only the anterior contact, posteriors, there is a wedge-shaped space, which means posterior disocclusion is what we desire in protrusion. Now, what about right or left lateral movement? The ideal occlusal scheme in, in lateral excursion is what is called as canine guided occlusion, which means if I go on to the right side, the maxillary and mandibular canine on the right side alone contact, bringing about separation of all the other teeth. When you have separation of back teeth, friends, you have a friction-free occlusion. And basically, a friction-free occlusion is what human stomatognathic system desires. You do not want interferences in your mouth. Remember, in the natural dentition, interferences usually cause attrition. But in full mouth reconstruction, an interference will cause porcelain fracture. If you do not want your porcelain to fracture, try to achieve what you see on screen. The basic fundamental here is dots at the back and lines in the front. Dots at the back are nothing but your static occlusal contacts. Lines on the front are your dynamic guidances. This is the concept of anterior guidance bringing about posterior disocclusion. This is how it looks for the maxillary arch. This is how it looks for the mandibular arch. Remember in the mandibular arch, what is important is the functional cusp tip goes to the buccal and the marginal ridge contact goes to the distal. You still have two points of contact for premolar, four points of contact for molar, and you have the canines that are guiding in lateral excursion. You have the incisors that are guiding in protrusion. Now, why is this called mutually protected occlusion? Now, remember, when you tap, tap, tap together, which means you're biting in MIP, posterior take take the bulk of the occlusal load because all the load is axial in nature, it's compressive. This protects the anterior teeth. We do not want anterior teeth to get overloaded. Okay. However, when you go into any dynamic movement, protrusion, right lateral or left lateral, anterior teeth separate the posterior teeth. What does this do? This decreases muscle activity. This decreases friction. This decreases the possibility of porcelain fracture, abutment fracture, mobility, food lodgement, and things like that. Okay. So remember in MIP, Posterior teeth protect the anterior teeth. In excursive movement, anterior teeth protect the posterior teeth, which is the reason why this kind of an occlusion is very aptly termed mutually protected occlusion. Now, this is all for class one. I'm going to give you a slightly different perspective to this as well. Here I am showing you markings that co correlate or correspond to antagonist contact markings. Go ahead, take a picture of this if you need to, friends. Take a screenshot and then keep this in, your, in front of you when you're working on single tooth or full mouth dentistry. Occlusion principles don't change significantly. Try to come as close as possible to what is recommended as ideal or perfected occlusion. 
Now, what if your patient comes in with a class two occlusion? Remember, class two means mandible is one premolar width behind. So typically you don't get anterior contact on a central and lateral, but you still get a canine contact. Can you see here in the maxillary, you get a distal marginal ridge. In a mandibular, you get a mesial marginal ridge contact. Functional cusp tip contacts don't change. All right, so this is how the occlusal scheme is for a class two. And this is how the occlusal scheme is for a class three. My mission in this very quick recording is to give you the ideal so that you have some base to go back into your practice and try to reciprocate this in its best and fullest form. A lot of people believe, friends, prosthodontics is about aesthetics and function. I'd like to give a small hint here that please start thinking of prosthodontics in a slightly different light. Think function first, aesthetics automatically follows. What good is an extremely good looking restoration if it does not serve the test of time? So first cater to function and aesthetics will automatically come. All right, that is, friends, my two cents on very quick aspect of occlusion in full mouth dentistry. If you want to learn more from me, I'm proud that I have had the privilege of authoring a book. This is the master volume, which is a colored atlas, and it teaches you more about occlusion and full mouth restorations, porcelain veneer dentistry, partial bonded restorations, and things like that. A big, big, big thank you to Medisage for giving me this platform and for all of you for giving the time to learn from me in the aspect of occlusion. I am extremely active on social media. Feel free to follow me, send in a friend request, and I love to stay connected with you and maybe even answer your questions on a digital platform. And I love to say this until we meet again. I wish you all an interference-free life. Take care. Bye-bye.